walking down the pavements of New York City, I noticed that every 20 minutes, there is a city bus coming in the opposite direction. And every 30 minutes, there is a city bus overtaking me from behind. What is the time gap between one city bus passing a stationary point known as a local bus stop beside the bus route and immediately next city bus in the same direction passing the stationary point? So basically, we have to find out some time here, right? The time gap between one city bus to the other city bus. And the options given are 27 minutes, 24 minutes, 25 minutes cannot be determined or fifth option, none of these. Now, first and foremost, let us understand the question clearly, right? Because I know half of you have not even understood what the question says. See, now this is about a person who is walking, uh, you know, on, on a road. He finds that every 20 minutes, there is a city bus which comes in the opposite direction. Every 20 minutes, there is a city bus coming in the opposite direction. And every 30 minutes, there is a city bus overtaking him from behind. Right? So basically, if you say, let's say this is the man here, right? And he's walking in this direction. So what he sees, there are buses coming from behind and there are buses coming in the opposite direction. Right? He's, he's just walking on this path here. He's walking on this path. So buses coming from behind and the buses also coming in the opposite direction. So he notices that every 20 minutes, there is a city bus coming in the opposite direction. So see, these are the buses coming in opposite direction. Right? So since, I mean, as he's moving in this direction there, in the opposite direction of the bus, he finds that every 20 minutes, there is a bus that comes. Every 20 minutes, right? So here, the interval is 20 minutes, right? The frequency is that every 20 minutes, there's a bus that comes. And every 30 minutes, there is a city bus overtaking me from behind. There's a city bus which overtakes me from behind. So it's obvious that when you're moving in this direction, also buses come from behind. And they, they, these buses will overtake you. Every 30 minutes, right? So every 30 minutes, there is a bus that overtakes from behind. Okay. Now, one important point to be noted here is we are talking about the same city bus. Same city bus meaning similar buses. So the speed of the buses coming in the opposite direction and those coming from behind would be the same. Are you able to follow? Though it is not mentioned explicitly, but it has to be taken for granted because we are talking about city buses. So we will assume that the buses coming in the opposite direction and those coming from behind are all uh, you know, traveling at the same speed. The speed of the buses is same. All the buses is same. Right? Let us assume that the speed of bus is B. Right? Speed of the bus. Whether it is coming in opposite direction or from behind, the bus uh, speed would remain uh, same. Right? Let us assume the speed is B. And let us assume the speed of this man. Speed of this man here is M. Right? So you know that this is going to be a concept of relative speed. Because we see that two objects are moving at the same time. Right? Like when you consider this case, the two bodies are moving in opposite direction. Right? One bus comes in the opposite direction and this person is moving in the other direction there. So basically here the relative speed concept comes into picture. Similarly when you consider the buses coming from behind again both the bodies are moving in the same direction right. The man is moving in forward direction the bus also comes from behind and moves in the same direction. So here again we have the concept of relative speed. So that is the reason uh, we need to know the I mean we need to consider some variables for speeds of bus and man there. So B and M are the speeds respectively. So point number one is that Every 20 minutes, a bus comes from the forward direction. Every 30 minutes, a bus comes from the, uh, the bus comes from behind. Now again, he says, what is the time gap between one city bus passing a stationary point known as a local bus stop beside the bus route? Now basically, this is the bus route. And let us assume this is the bus stop. Right? This point here is the bus stop. Okay. So he says, what is the time gap between one city bus passing a stationary point known as a local bus stop beside the bus route and immediately the next city bus in the same direction passing the stationary point. So basically we are talking about this stationary point here. He says, how much is the time gap between one city bus passing this bus stop and immediately the next city bus passing in the same direction this bus stop. Are you able to follow? So it, it is like this. It, it is like this. Let us assume there is a source here. <coughs> this is a station from which buses are coming out. Right? So, it is obvious that after, you know, at regular intervals, buses keep coming out and move in this direction, right? They all move in this direction. Similarly, from here also, the buses are coming out. I mean, at regular intervals, right? The buses, all bus travel at the same speed and they're coming out at regular intervals. And as this person is moving in one particular direction, he finds that the buses coming in opposite direction arrive after every 20 minutes. Those coming from behind will arrive after every 30 minutes, right? Now, he says there is a bus stop here, a stationary point. How much is the time gap between a bus passing this bus stop and immediately the next bus passing this bus stop. And remember, both are moving in the same direction. So either we should say, you know, bus coming from behind, 
pass this bus stop the next bus coming from behind passes this bus stop so what is the time gap between those two buses or if you take the uh, buses coming in opposite direction so if the first bus passes this bus stop at time t after how much time will the second bus pass this bus stop both coming from the opposite direction so either opposite direction or those coming from behind right now like i told you a very important assumption here is that buses are all moving at the same speed whether they come from behind or they come from forward all of them are traveling at the same speed right because they are all city buses so we have to go with that assumption now you may ask me a question if all of them are traveling at the same speed and all of them are coming out at regular intervals from both the sides why are the times different why is it taking only 20 minutes in opposite direction and 30 minutes in the uh, you know same direction obviously because the concept of relative speed comes into picture you know that when the two bodies are moving in opposite direction see this case this is opposite direction case and this is the same direction case. We very well know that when two bodies are moving in opposite direction, the relative speed is sum of the speeds. So what happens in this case, the relative speed is B plus M. And because the speed is more, the time taken to cover the distance is less. But when they are moving in the same direction, in this case, what happens? The relative speed is B minus M, the speed of the bus minus speed of the man. So when the speed is less, the time taken is more. So that is the reason that time taken here is more. Is that point clear to all of you? So that is what the question is. If you have not started the solution yet, we have only understood what the question is. Now let us see what should be done to arrive at the answer. See, the point to be noted here is that the distance between <coughs> any two city buses, whether they are coming in the opposite direction or, I mean, I mean, let's say, look at two buses starting from this point, right? Two buses starting from uh, opposite direction, right? The first bus starts, then after some time, we know that the second bus starts. The distance between these two buses, let us assume is D. Now, when you look at this case, buses which are coming from behind, right? The first bus starts and after some time, right? They are starting at regular intervals, remember. So, after some time, the second bus starts. So, what will be the distance between those two buses? It will be D only, right? So, the point to be noted is the distance between any two buses which have started from the opposite direction and any two buses which have started from the same direction will be equal. This is a very, very important point to be noted here you know that buses are starting at regular intervals from both the points right so let us assume this point the first bus starts it is traveling at some speed after a particular time it is pre-decided right after some time the second bus would start now both the buses are traveling at same speed so obviously there is some distance between them right the second bus started a little later so there will be some distance which gets created so let us assume that distance is d here what I'm trying to tell you here is that the same distance would be there in case of these buses as well. Why? The buses from both the sides are traveling at the same speed or all the buses are traveling at the same speed. You're able to follow. So, the distance in the two cases is going to be equal. Are you able to follow? The distance in both the cases is going to be equal. The distance between two buses which are coming in the uh, coming from the opposite junction and the distance between the two buses which coming from the junction which is behind will remain the same. Right? The two consecutive buses basically. Right, We are talking about two consecutive buses. What, why is the reason of distance being same? Remember, buses are all traveling at same speed. So, speed is same. And they will obviously travel at regular intervals. Right? I mean, the bus coming out, like first bus comes at 8 a.m. Second bus will come at 8.15. Third bus will come at 8.30. Then 8.45, 9 and so on. Similarly, here also, if the first bus starts at 7, second bus will start at 7.15, 7.30 and so on. Assuming that the time interval is 15 minutes between them. So, the point is that distance is going to be same. And this is what we are going to use for solving this question here. Are you able to follow? Now, if you look at it, see this, this, take this case, opposite case, right? When the <coughs> bus and the person are moving in opposite direction, right? You know that the relative speed is B plus M. Now, this distances are equal, right? Distance, I mean, this is a statement that I'm writing so that you can understand. But while you're solving it in the exam, you need not write this. Distance between buses coming from behind will be equal to the distance between buses coming from opposite direction. Yes or no? The distance between two buses coming from behind will be equal to the distance between the two buses coming from the opposite direction, right? Of course, we are talking about consecutive buses, right? When you say buses here, we are talking about consecutive buses starting from this point and consecutive buses starting from this point, right? Let us assume that distance is D. Anyway, we have taken it here. Distance is D. Now, what is distance? Distance is equal to speed into time. 
right distance is equal to speed into time now distance between the buses coming from behind what will be the speed understand again the point is uh, you, you take this concept of relative speed between the man and the bus right between the man and the bus now since the man is moving in same direction what happens one bus will cross him at this point let's say at this at, at this particular point of time a bus crosses him after some time which is 30 minutes the second bus crosses him so if you look at it we can say that the distance between the two buses is nothing but the relative uh, distance between this man and the bus in the when they are moving in the same direction so we can say that you know we are talking about buses coming from behind or which is same direction so we can say uh, b minus m after how many minutes will he see the next bus 30 minutes so b minus m into 30 is equal to distance between the buses coming from opposite direction see the first bus has started the first bus crossed the man at this point after 20 minutes the second bus crosses so again you can take the relative concept between the man and the bus to find out the distance between the two buses are you able to follow so relative speed between the man and the bus will be b plus m because both of them are moving in the same direction and the time given is 20 minutes into 20 so this is the equation now from this try to find out the ratio between the two speeds which is very important so 30 and 20 anyway zeros get cancelled here 3b minus 3m equals to 2b plus 2m so upon simplification what do you get when you simplify you will get 3b minus 2b b is equal to uh, 2m plus 3m 5m b equals to 5m now this is a very very important conclusion that is the speed of the bus is five times the speed of the man whether they are moving in opposite direction or same direction the speed of the bus is five times the speed of the man right is that is that understood all of you the speed of the bus will be five times the speed of the man now how do we get the time there see <coughs> uh, you know the distance is either b minus m into 30 or b plus m into 20 right now let us find out the distance distance is here uh, b minus m into 30 so which can be taken as 5m minus m into 30 how much is that 4m into 30 120m so basically the distance is equal to 120 times the speed of the man right 120 times the speed of the man now you you have considered which case I mean basically 120 times the speed of the man what do you have to find out the time the time between two consecutive verses understand the time between time gap I would say the time gap will be equal to the distance between the two buses by the speed of the bus are able to follow let us assume this is bus 1 and after some time the bus 2 starts right now we have to find out after how many minutes the second bus stop uh, second bus starts right and we are assuming that both of them are moving in the same direction either coming from behind or coming in the opposite direction now we have found that the distance between the two buses comes out to be 120 times m yes or no distance between the two buses is 120 times n look at our calculation first of all we had equated the distance between two buses coming from behind and distance between two buses coming from forward direction which which gave us the uh, ratio of their speeds after that we find that the distance based on this ratio comes out to be 120 into m where m is the speed of the uh, man right where m is the speed of the man okay now what do we have to find out the time between the two buses time between two consecutive buses time gap is nothing but time between two consecutive buses now what is time time is equal to distance by speed time is equal to distance between the buses by the speed of bus right now distance between the buses comes out to be 120 m the speed of the bus is b right but b is equal to 5m so substitute that 5m here so we get 120 m by 5m both the m's get cancelled 120 by 5 is equal to 24 minutes and that's your answer 24 minutes option b would be the answer two persons ram and mohan who start from the same end a of a linear track ab and keep running to and fro for infinite time the ratio of the speed of ram and mohan is 3 is to 2 if ab is 100 meters which point is their point of fourth meeting from point a which point is the point of fourth meeting from point a so options given are 80 meters 60 meters 20 meters 40 meters or none of these so so reread this question understand there are two persons ram and mohan both of them start from the same end a of a linear track ab and we know that the track ab is 100 meter long so basically there is a track ab right which is 100 meter long the length of this track is 100 meters the length of this track is 
100 meters all right now there are two persons ram and mohan both of them have started from the same end a so ram and mohan both start from the same point a both of them have started from the same point a yeah and they keep running to and fro for infinite time they keep running to and fro for infinite time, meaning what ram will run from a to b and return from b to a then from a to b and then b to a and keeps doing that for infinite time and same is the case with mohan right both of them are running for infinite time to and fro between these two points the ratio of their speeds ratio of the speeds of ram and mohan is 3 to 2 which means speed of ram by speed of mohan is in the ratio of 3 by 2 right 3 3 to 2 so if the track is 100 meter long which point is the point of fourth meeting from point a so let's say when they meet for the fourth time see they will continue meeting together right they will keep crossing each other uh, multiple times right they'll keep crossing each other multiple times i mean of course infinite times between a and b so when they meet for the fourth time let's say they meet here somewhere here when they meet for the fourth time there's a meeting point let's say for the fourth time right m4 so what is the distance between a to this fourth meeting point is a question here what's the distance between a and the fourth meeting point now while this question looks to be complex answering this is very very simple i mean once you solve it now next time onwards if a similar question is asked it would take about 10 seconds for you to arrive at the answer not more than 10 seconds so how is that possible look at it it's so simple try and understand both of them started from the same point a they're running in the same direction because the ratios are i mean because their speeds are in the ratio 3 to 2 which means ram's speed is 50 percent more than mohan's speed 3 to 2 means what this is 2 plus 1 right i mean 50 percentage more than mohan's speed yes or no take any value which take any two values which are in the ratio of 3 to 2 like 30 and 20 30 and 20 means what ram's speed is 30 kilometers per hour assume and mohan's speed is 20 kilometers per hour so clearly ram's speed is 10 kilometers per hour more than mohan's speed and 10 more than mohan is what 10 out of 20 50 percentage more so basically what happens is as soon as they start as soon as they start from this point a ram will be ahead of mohan ram will always be ahead of mohan right ram will be running ahead of mohan because his speed is 50 percentage more than mohan's speed yeah so basically ram will reach the point b first ram will run full and reach the point b first and then he'll turn yes or no so let me let me show you this in i mean explanation would take a little bit of time so please bear with me but uh, once you've understood it becomes easy so let me explain you the first uh, first meeting right in the first meeting what happens ram will cover ram will cover 100 meters and return right he'll be in the return track and somewhere in in the return journey he will meet he will meet mohan yeah so this is mohan this is ram and this is a meeting point let's say this is m1 meeting point one you're able to follow so what happened ram covered 100 meters try to understand this is very very important ram covered 100 meters from point a to point b and then return in the return journey he met mohan somewhere he will meet mohan somewhere in the return journey yes or no he'll meet mohan somewhere in the return journey by the time mohan was covering his first path itself yeah but overall if you understand by the time they meet at m1 what's the total distance covered what's the total distance covered by both ram and mohan total distance covered by both ram and mohan it will be 100 plus 100 i'll tell you why is it 100 plus 100 see ram initially covered 100 from a to b plus ram covered some part of 100 let's say this is like uh, x and this is y mohan covered from a to meet m1 let's say from a to m1 it is y a to m1 is y meters from b to m1 is x meters so x plus y is also 100 yes or no 100 plus x plus y but we know that x plus y is equal to 100 because they are covering the whole length together which means the total distance is 100 plus 100 200 meters till they meet at m1 meeting point one yes or no they have covered a total of 200 meters distance they have covered a total distance of 200 meters together together they have covered 200 meters of course ram has covered more than mohan out of 200 meters right ram has covered more than 100 meters mohan has covered less than 100 meters yeah now if you if you observe initially both of them started from point a and they were running infinitely now the new meeting point is m1 so at m1 what happens both of them are again together but the only difference is now they are running in the opposite direction. When they were at point A, both of them were running in the same direction. But once they meet at M1, from this point onwards, they are in the opposite direction. So Mohan is trying to cover his journey in this direction. 
in this direction and Ram is continuing his journey in the opposite direction. Again they would start, they will meet somewhere. So Ram will cover this return by the time Mohan will come and return and somewhere they will meet here let's say. You are able to follow. So trace the second path now. Trace the second path. Let me show that in red. So from this meeting point they will start. Ram will cover this whole distance by the time Mohan let's say covers this and returns. Yes sir. No? So Ram has covered this and then he's in his, he's in the return journey, right? He's in the return journey somewhere here. By the time Mohan covers point B, he reaches point B and turns back and he meets somewhere here. So let's say this is meeting point two. This is meeting point two. Yeah. If you understand from M1 to M2 also, from the first meeting point to the second meeting point, again both of them have together covered 200 meters. Try to try to visualize that. They started from this point. Ram covered from M1 till A and back to M2. Mohan covered from M1 from till B and then back to M2. See, you understand? Ram was at M1. From M1 he went to A and came back to M2. Mohan from M1 he went to B and came back to M2. So if you see overall they have covered total 100 plus 100, 200 meters. So from M1 to M2 in this journey also both of them together have covered 200 meters. 200 meters. And the same continues till they meet for 4 times. Yes or no? The same continues till he uh, meets for 4th time. You are getting the process? So now what happens the new meeting point is M2. See this involves a lot of explanation I'm sure uh, you might be wondering if you have to spend so much time in the exam but once you have understood this next time onwards it becomes very easy. I mean final solution when you observe you'll be like wow this is like just one step. So now M2 is the new meeting point. Again from M2 what happens Ram is now moving towards B, Mohan is moving towards A and again they will re you know return on their paths and meet somewhere in the middle. So M3. So from M2 to M3 also they would have covered together 200 meters. Yeah. So the point that I'm trying to make is for each meeting, this is very, very important. For each meeting, for each meeting, they together cover 200 meters. This is the most important point. They together cover 200 meters. Double of the path. 100 meters of path, right? So they will cover 200 meters. This is very, very important. This you have to understand. For each meeting, they together cover 200 meters. If you have understood this, what is he asking us to find out? He is talking about the fourth meeting. Which point is the point of fourth meeting? So when they meet for the fourth time, what is the total distance covered in the fourth meeting? Total distance for fourth meeting. Total distance for fourth meeting. See, in each meeting, they have covered 200 meters. So in four meetings, they will cover 4 into 200. How much is that? 800 meters. Yes or no? Both of them together would have covered 800 meters. So that's one step. That's the first step. Suppose it's his fifth meeting. In the fifth meeting, both of them together have covered how much? 1000 meters. If he talks about third meeting, so when they meet for the third time, they would have together covered 600 meters. Each meeting they cover 200 meters. This is the key. Once you have understood this, fourth meeting, fifth meeting, nth meeting and into 200, you will get the total distance covered. Now comes the next point. Their speed ratio is 3 to 2. See, both of them together have covered 800 meters. Now, can I find out out of this 800, out of this 800, how much has each person covered? Yes, I can find that out. How is that? Just divide 800 in the ratio of 3 to 2. See, time here doesn't matter. In this particular question, time doesn't play any role. Because both of them are running together from the same starting point, right? Nobody had started a later or earlier. Both of them started at the same point A at the same time and they're continuously running. So whether they meet for the first time or second time or third time or fourth time, the time taken for them to meet for that nth time is same. Both of them have run for the same amount of time. They would have covered different distances, but they would have met for the, uh, you know, they would have uh, ran for the same amount of time. Yes or no? Like, like, let's say both of them started at 8, 8 a.m. Yes or no? Both of them started at 8 a.m. So Ram's watch was showing 8 a.m. Mohan's watch also was showing 8 a.m. And they are doing all this drama of running between A and B. First time, second time meeting, third time meeting, fourth time meeting. When they meet for the fourth time here, Ram's watch had the time 9 o'clock and 20 minutes. Mohan's watch will also have the same time 9 o'clock and 20 minutes. Which means both of them have taken 1 hour and 20 minutes to reach this point. Ram took 1 hour 20 minutes, Mohan also has taken 1 hour 20 minutes. So this is a very important point again. The time doesn't play any role here. The time taken by both the persons to reach the fourth meeting point was same. So I can simply say that this 800 meters out of this 800 meters, 
the distance covered by see distance is proportional to speed distance covered is proportional to speed right distance is equal to speed into time time is not a play not a factor at all here in this case so distance is directly proportional to speed so i can say distance covered by ram by distance covered by mohan is nothing but the ratio of their speeds it should be divided in the ratio of their speeds speed of ram by speed of mohan so i can say distance covered will be like what is the ratio of the speed 3 to 2 right so distance covered by ram will be 3 out of 5 parts into 800 distance covered by mohan will be 2 out of 5 parts into 800 you don't have to write this step on paper i mean i'm just trying to explain it fully so 3 by 5 i mean basically what you have to do divide 800 into 5 parts 3 plus 2 5 parts divide 800 into 5 parts each part would be 160 160 into 3 480 meters 160 into 2 320 meters so now the conclusion is total distance covered by two guys is 800 meters out of these 800 meters out of these 800 meters ram has covered 480 meters mohan has covered 320 meters Ram has covered 800, 480 meters, Mohan has covered 320 meters. Simply divide 800 in the ratio of 3 to 2, whatever ratio is given here. Yeah, you can, you can avoid this step. Like I said, don't have to put that step on paper, right? 3 plus 2 is 5 parts, divide 800 into 5 parts. Each part comes out to be 160. So 3 into 160, uh, 480 and 2 into 160 is 320. Now, now look at the third step. First step is over, this one. Second step is over. We have found the individual distances covered. Now the third step. The third step here is the final answer. He says, which point is the point of uh, fourth meeting from point A? Which point is the point of fourth meeting from point A? Let us look at Ram's coverage. Ram has covered how much? 480. Now try and understand. Ram has covered 480. Ram started from point A. So point A to B, 100. From B to A, another 100. So total 200. Again from A to B, 300. I mean another 100, so makes it total 300. From B to A again, he will cover 100. So by the time Ram covers 400 meters, he is at what point? He is back to point A. Yes or no? A to B 100, B to A is also 100. So 100, then back 100, then forward 100, and then back 100. So by the time Ram covers 400 meters, he is at point A. And now he is covering the remaining journey. Already he has covered 400, now he covers 80 meters. He covers 80 meters. He reaches meeting point 4. Yes or no? This 480 is the distance covered till the meeting point 4. So 400 backward and forward, he comes back to point A and then 80 meters. So I can say the final answer is 80 meters here. So basically you have to split 480 as 400 plus 80. Similarly, you, you can do that for Mohan also. I mean with respect to Mohan also it can be done. How is that? See Mohan has covered 320. So how do you cover that uh, 320 meters? Mohan will cover 100 meters from A to B, then another 100 meters from B to A and then 100 meters from A to B. So by the time Mohan goes 300, he is at point B. When Mohan has covered 300 meters, he is at point B. Then he will cover another 200, uh, 20 meters. Of course, meeting point 4 will be closer to point B. I mean, don't go by that illustration there. I randomly put some point, right? Meeting point 4 has to be close to point B because it is coming out, 80 is coming out to be the answer, right? So it has to be somewhere here. But never mind, the, the idea is Mohan covers 300. So A to B is 100, B to A is 100. A to B again is 100. So when he covers 300, he is at point B. Then he covers 20 meters. So he is 20 meters from point B. If he is 20 meters from point B, obviously he is 80 meters from point A. So 80 meters is the answer. So either you go by Ram's coverage or Mohan's coverage of this total distance, you will find that the answer is 80 meters. Because he is asking us to find out from point A. The same question can be in terms of point B. What, which point is the point of fourth meeting from point B? In that case, your answer will be 20 meters. Because Mohan is 20 meters from point B, right? Or Ram is also 20 meters from point B. So 80 meters, option is the answer. After doing all this analysis, I think now you should realize that solving this question in the exam would not take more than 10 seconds if you know how to do this. We will not do all this drama in the exam. What we do in the exam is fourth meeting, each meeting will be 200 meters. 100 plus 100. Remember, you have to double this 200 meters. So fourth meeting will be 4 into 200, 800 meters. Divide 800 in the ratio of 3 to 2. So 480 and 320. 480 means what? 400 will bring him back to point A and then 80 meters. So I think less than 10 seconds, you'll mark the answer as option 1 and go to the next one.